a meeting of the joint town council and school board finance committee. I have a, um, Sean Babine is not here today, so I will be the facilitator. But with us is Christine Massengill and Carrie Lyford from the school board. Also, Chris Chiazzo and Peter Hayes from the town council. Tom Hall, George Entwistle and Joanne Sizemore from the school department. And Kate Bolt. And I think Ruth Porter may join us in progress, so but Perfect. please start. So let's go to old business. Um, come up with a glossary of terms that we'd like to use throughout this budget cycle, and we've all sort of started going in and, and defining those terms, and I think if we could get an update as to where we stand with that, then maybe over the next week we can finalize that and I can reassign any that are still outstanding, or if we have questions on some and want to pare it down a little bit, we can. So yes. I, I have a question on the definitions. If we, if, I, like I have four or five definitions, if I put them out there and there's a question of whether that's the real definition or not, are we going to do, are we going to just bring that up collectively at the end and run through them all at the end? Or are we just I think, yeah, I think okay. once we get the list complete, yeah. um, we can then sort of rehash it if there's okay. questions on specific ones. I mean, okay. some of them are pretty straightforward and I don't think there'll be much discussion, but there may be a few that have um, some questions. So okay. once, once they're all done. Okay. Well, I think this was really seen as something that's a uh, work in progress. I think that there are, are new terms that will come up. Um, you know, I started going in and, and just picking off the ones that I I thought I could probably you know be the best uh, resource in terms of some of the some of the definitions. Um, you know, what's the definition of budget cut? I, I was like, okay, somebody else could do that one. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, but cohort and COLA and uh, some of them are, are accounting terms and some and many of them are really educational terms and, and I think we would take responsibility for all of those. And, and again, it's, it's meant to be a collaborative effort. So uh, this is the, the most recent iteration that I just pulled off. This afternoon? Yep. Okay. I don't know if I was before, I Carrie, or I after. think I have a more recent. <laughs> I could see the letter. But I was in there um, ready to talk. I could see her messing around in there, though. Yeah. I could see her name. Carrie, do you I got my like I can make, make, around. make copies of what Carrie has if you want me to just run them. Well, I, mean, oh, I, I know mine on the email or Google Docs. Google Docs. I, know, um, I, know. I, know. I think it will continue. I think there's no need to make more copies. Right. No. Kill more trees. But it, um, now, the, now the main document has already been modified by what Carrie put in there. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe maybe as part of the process of what I'd love to do is I think part of the exercise too is to make sure we're all on the same page and we use terms. Right. And so I think a good one is budget cuts because for some people it's been used as if you submit a budget and that changes, that's a budget cut. In a business world, a budget cut is if you had X dollars last year and you get less dollars the following year. Mm. That's a budget cut. So there's big differences in what budget cuts mean. So I just think part of the confusion last year was everybody was using different terms and it meant different things. So maybe when we get the list, ones that we think may have some mixed meanings or some confusion, I think it's just great we all get on the same page and understand the terms. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that I think that would, would add most value to if, if you have either mine or Carrie's um, list is to go through and see what terms are missing. Mm -hmm. And I would take responsibility if you let me know what's missing, I, I will go in and update the document with and add that to our glossary, add those terms to our glossary. Oh, if there's any additional... Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, but I think it's a good point to just to say, like we said before, once the list is complete, we, we circle the wagons again and say, you know, everybody, distribute the list to everybody, here's the list, Check off ones if you have. If nobody has any questions or concerns, we don't even need to talk about it anymore. But if there's one or two that we're like, okay, can we have some clarification here or something? Then, I mean, I think that would be helpful because it is. It's not just for everybody else's benefit. That was for our benefit too. I'm like to use some version of it, if not the entirety, um, as part of the budget document. Yep. Uh, I see no harm. I mean, it's something that we can use as a group as we work. But uh, I think there's probably value to the public too. Um, 
to make it part of that document. Anyway. And, and, yeah, I was going to say, and sure. this will go up on that on the website on that page, hopefully. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So, so this document just got lives where it lives on. Uh, right now, it just lives. Living as a Google document that we're yeah. all working on. Okay. Just with us. <laughs> with the school people, with the school people, because we're not on Google Docs. So. Okay. I, I couldn't get on. <laughs> oh, you, oh, that, oh, okay. That, so I couldn't figure it out. You're not alone. Right. You're not alone, Tom. Right. You're never alone, Tom. Right. Oh, you could. You could. Oh, no, way back when, but he knew it way back when, so he was like, I don't have Google Docs, and so we were sort of razzing a little bit. Exciting along. <laughs> this lawsuit would be good during the budget form, when you yeah. have that. Sure. When people right. Right. have that glossary. Yeah, that's a good that's idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, we can do a crossword puzzle with all these words. <laughs> <laughs> Word scramble, right? You can do that. Yeah. So if everyone can go back in, if you, if you don't know what you were assigned, Shoot me a quick email. Peter, you're all set. We've communicated. You've translated my... Yes, you're, you, you've completed your assignment. Thank you. Um, a couple others have to... Oh. That's the word right there. Perfect. Can you, I you don't have that, right? You do. You, I'm yeah. sure you do, because you sent it to me. It, I pulled right. it from your email when I printed okay. my card. Right, so I'll go back and just... So when you see an initial next to it, it just means that's the person who's going to um, define it. I just uh, word uh, word uh, word uh, word you just start defining all of them? No, he just deleted it. He just thought that he brought up the word as it should be added, so he got rid of all of it. <laughs> but if it, shouldn't there be a version of that? If Google <coughs> way back the way that I understood it to work, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Yes, there should be yeah. still that yeah. version yeah. of it. Way back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Everybody good with that? Moving along. Well, there's one that I've joined your business on it, but he's already done it. There's one that has my name, but I know he already did it because I just saw it there. So okay. Perfect. All right, new business. Capital versus operational. I was yeah, I'll, over to Tom. I'll start, but it was really a collaborative effort between George and Kate and uh, Ruth and I. And what we put together was uh, what we think it's a real life example uh, looking at the current year. And we've included, and I'd like to make some reference to the current uh, capital improvements project, which is a five year process, uh, CFP process. Um, so there's a couple of things that we'd like to impart uh, initially. And really, the difference is in why, why we have a capital budget at all. And frankly, I, for my purposes, the reason we do is really to segregate out. Uh, abnormal costs, I'll say, that ha can sometimes have an abnormal effect on an operating budget. So it's, uh, if you can isolate those off to the side, you can do much better comparative analysis year over year uh, with your operational budget. Um, having said that, there's a number of things that are reoccurring that we're doing year in and year out, and it's arguable that they could be um, and maybe should be you know, wrapped up into the operational budget because they don't vary that much year to year. They're very constant. and so. The five things, three, uh, two on the school side, three on the town side, uh, kind of fit that bill in terms of reoccurring. Um, the other things, just kind of as background information, and we, we can uh, spend a little more detail if you like. Well, uh, let's, actually, let's, let's not move off the CIP first. Everyone should have received, we had it as Exhibit A. And the other point I just want to make uh, about the capital budget, just because an item is in capital budget doesn't mean it's financed. In fact, uh, you can look, and this, again, is the existing current capital budget. Uh, there's a column right in the middle of the spreadsheet that has a, a number of letter assigned to it, and there's a legend at the bottom. Uh, but that will indicate how we're paying for the item. An A is appropriation, so these are not financed. Uh, they're being actually appropriated funds, including the tax rate, so to speak. Uh, so I think that's uh, an important point to make. I think a lot of people sometimes are quick to assume if it's capital, it's finance. That's not necessarily the case. There's a, a decision made uh, for each and every one of these. So that's uh, kind of the, the first piece I just wanted to impart. Um, the second one, and it's the other exhibit to this analysis, is uh, just because it's in capital and just because it's financed, um, not all things are created equal. And we critically evaluate each of the capital items to be financed and decide how long we should, what method of finance and how long we should finance it. And the obvious rule of thumb is you should not finance something longer than its useful life. 
And so what I've included is the bond order that went to council was approved this time last year. And you'll see the laundry list of projects. And uh, most importantly, look at the right-hand column. Those are the number of years that each of these items are, are financed for. So it, it ranges from a year all the way to 20 years. So again, I just want to make sure everyone appreciates uh, that that's the way we always have, have viewed this and will continue to as well. So that's kind of background pieces. And then this analysis really looks at what would it mean uh, if we were to migrate certain these five items from our capital budget into our operational budget. So maybe I'll let Kate walk us through that analysis. You Would sure you? can if you like. You have to hand me the exhibits though because okay. somehow I walked out of my office and left them behind. I was going through my pile of stuff today and weeding things out. I think I might have weeded a little bit too hard. Um, so basically what we said was that um, it would be beneficial for us to take a look at fiscal year 16 because it's kind of a done deal. It's a, it's a known quantity. We've already identified the projects. We've already approved them. We've already decided what types of financing we're going to um, employ to fund those projects. So it was really easy for us to say, well, let's take a look at this and let's pluck out those items, um, as Tom says, that... Um, that based on the parameters that we've been talking about, there, you know, are they recurring? Are there something that's going to come up every every year in one form or another? Um, should they really be in the operating budget? So it would be easier for us to identify those items and to pull them out, and then to do um, a little guesswork as to what that would mean on real numbers. Um, so what we did here in <coughs> scenario one and scenario two, which you're seeing at the bottom of the page there. Scenario one is status quo. It says these items were placed in the CIP budget with the intent that they would be bonded, and so that's what we're going to do. And Ruth did a little calculation that said um, if we bonded these per our current practice and we used <coughs> the information that we got from the bond folks um, about interest rates and the, the likely life of the project, each of the projects, that would increase our uh, cost for those items, a total cost for those items by about $214,000 in interest. So if you take the total amount, um, 1.5 million-ish of the value of that bonding, you're going to add about $200,000 over the life of those projects in additional cost, and that's the cost of financing. Um, what it would do to debt service in the following year, and again, we're using fiscal 16 numbers here, it would add about $186,000 to our debt service in the ensuing year. If we added that debt service, and again, here we're crossing years a little bit, so it gets a little weird, but we let's say we, we had to pay that debt service in fiscal 16, just as a, a point of comparison, then we would have increased the request for taxes in 16 by about five cents on the mill rate. Uh, would have been a 0.3% higher <coughs> mill rate had we added those things to our debt service in fiscal 16. Now scenario two is what we're aiming for, which is what if we paid for them outright? What if we put them in the operating budget and appropriated the funds and we're done? Those things are paid for. Um, if we did that, then we would be adding $1.5 million to our operating budget as opposed to the $214,000 we're using for our debt service number. Oh, actually, 185. Thank you. 185 for debt service. So you add $1.5 million to your operating budget. We don't pay any interest. We don't have any debt service change in the coming years. Um, but we do have an increase in our operating budget in fiscal 16, which would push the mill rate up by about 41 cents, uh, or 2.65 percent higher than the mill rate we actually landed with. Um, so one of the things that Tom and Ruth and George and I ended up talking about was, well, that, that's kind of a big jump and it's a big difference, but is there a place that is uh, somewhere in between that's incremental? where we could say we'd like to set a target that we truly believe, if we do so, that uh, some of these things belong in operating. We'd like to set a target that would tell us 
next year we'd really like to move five hundred thousand dollars from CIP to operating of items that we think are appropriate for that type of funding or maybe it's two hundred thousand dollars or maybe it's a million we don't really know where the sweet spot is what we know is that it's going to be pain soon and increase in debt service over the long run you know I think <coughs> So I think if I hear you right, though, and I think part of the problem, the financing aside and other things aside, but you know, I think some of the concerns are as, as taxpayers when they're considering things, the more that we put into capital budgets, they don't see the impact of that item like you just outlined here. They don't really see in the current year they're approving. It's really an expense down the road, and then it comes back, and it's that's a that's a fixed cost. Right. And so <clears throat> whatever we do, and I think your suggestion is great about thinking about what's operational, what's capital. But I think in, in this case, these two scenarios, that's a pretty big difference in the implied what voters are actually approving. So I don't know how we think about communicating that clearly so they understand. So I think that's, that's the other side of it, too. How do we be transparent what we're doing so voters know the impact of what they're deciding on? Well, and it wouldn't necessarily be a voter situation mm -hmm. because... Well, it's the mill rate. It impacts the mill rate, which they Voters do. Voters don't approve that. Mm -hmm. Well, they approve well, the school side. They would approve the school but budget, but this is town and school together. Yeah, right. And also the capital improvement budget does not go to the voters. That's something that, that, we, that we rely on as no, representatives. But, but no, but the impact of the capital improvement decisions... That's correct, but I, I also believe in finance we take those under advisement and under consideration when we look at our capital improvement because that's our responsibility and role as finance is to look at the impact of that debt. I don't think it's in a it's done in a vacuum. I would hope it's not done in a vacuum. It doesn't sound like it is. No, no, but my point is for the voters when they show up at the polls, yeah. they don't know the impact of those capital decisions. It's not disclosed to them. So I just I'm just No, it's not. It's not. Yeah, but I'm trying to decide, I'm trying to figure out what the impact of that is because they're not voting on the capital impact. They're voting on the operational budget, which does include debt service, which but is a long term, which is a function of the long term bonding, right? Well, I guess the point I'm trying to make, I'm not, I'm not suggesting anything, I'm just saying yeah. the problem is that when we make a capital decision in the budget process, yeah. the impact of that, if it goes to capital, mm -hmm. does not show up until the next fiscal year. <coughs> And so when it goes to the voters, when they're looking at what is the overall impact on the tax rate of what they're approving right. for the town, mm -hmm. combined budgets, right. that part's not disclosed to them. And whether we think that's important or not, but some, I think, taxpayers think that's just an important piece to know as they approve the budget. The I debt service is reported when we break the budget. No, but the difference is, there's, in this scenario, there's 36 cents on the tax rate that we're signing up for, but it's not. For, it, it's deferred a year. We've I mean, made decisions. I mean, in this case, it's a 2.65 percent increase in the effective tax rate that taxpayers, when they approve the budget, aren't seeing. That's if we. That's if we decide scenario two and move out of capital into operational. That's if we choose to to, to put a policy in place that removes those things out. Then that does impact the operational budget, which does go to the voters. What, I guess I guess my point is I understand I think I understand what you're trying to, I'm trying to understand where you're where you're coming at it from my my um, I guess my take on it would be the voters are looking at debt service that's part of the budget that we put in front of them as debt service climbs then we get pushback on what the percentage of the debt service is in our budget um, each individual capital improvement project there are various different ones and I guess my concern would be if we had to if we had to if we spelled out every single capital improvement project and what it did to the bond rating and we put that as part of the operational budget. I'm not sure if that's, a, if that's what, uh, maybe that's not what you're trying to say, but that's what I'm trying to figure out if that's what we're, you can see what I'm saying, because it's not just these three issues on, on capital. Oh, no, I know. I know. We've got every capital, every capital investment that we make impacts the debt service on some level. So right. if, does that mean that we, we need for every capital project, not just these, we need to go out and do an evaluation on the operational side of things and then put that out to voters and see if they're okay with it? No, no, I, I'm suggesting just as we think about what voters have asked us for, mm -hmm. just more transparency about yep. what we're doing as, as a town. <clears throat> when we share the mill rate with the town, that's the operational budget. Correct. But you're right. Every year we're making capital decisions for the town that has an impact on all future mill rates. Correct. And is
is it worthwhile? Should we consider, should we, when we approve the capital budget in total, in aggregate, should we have some type of disclosure saying, okay, this is the impact of the capital decisions we've made, this is what it's going to add to the this point forward? I don't know, but I'm just saying th it's pretty impactful. This, this illustration shows how we decide to account for those things mm -hmm. has a big impact on what voters will see as the effective tax rates. I think why you may be getting hung up is the voter, the voter thing, because when we're when we're talking about the capital budget and we're talking about town and school, there's only a very small segment that people actually physically go to the polls and vote on. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're saying, Peter, is that just because they don't cast their vote for the capital budget doesn't mean that it wouldn't behoove us to describe the impact of the capital budget. Right. But because that it impacts <coughs> their, their vote, if, you know, if, if they're going in, I think this is what Peter's saying, but if they have all of that information ahead of time, that two point, whatever it was, 2.65 is a huge jump. And so that impacts how they're going to how vote. They're going to vote. Right. And I guess to right. my point, though, I mean, when we have capital is part of the budget discussion, and we do, ha I mean, we get a report from from the school department and from the municipal, municipal department of how much we want to invest in capital. And part of those questions, I do believe, come up when we're doing an analysis of what does that do to our debt load? Where are we? Is this the right time to take that debt on? How are we going to finance that? Is it going to be long-term? Is it going to be short-term? Is it at least, what is it? I think part of that goes into the decision-making process. I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I think I'm now I'm, I'm kind of coming around to what you're, what you're trying to say. I, I think that process maybe could use a little more explanation. I guess my concern would be just um, because, you know, my first question out of this is what criteria did we use to determine which ones were in and out? And this is what we kind of went round and round on the, on the town mm -hmm. finance yep. side about what, what, where do we, what criteria, because is it subjective or is it objective? And, and some of this is subjective, or right. rightfully so. Um, and I just want to make sure that we don't, we don't get into a situation on a policy side of things where we're, where, where, um, um, uh, prevented from making capital decisions because we need a certain level of approval structures first. You, you see what I'm saying? So if we always have to go through, I, I'm not saying that we don't do that. We, we have that conversation during the capital side of things and that, that does translate through on the debt service portion of the operational budget. You know, you know what I mean? So I think we're having those discussions. We may just not be doing a good enough job explaining that and, and, and conveying that maybe. You know. Well, and I think the idea of this, the two scenarios side by side is that if we decide that there are things in capital that belong in operating, it is going to be immediately impactful rather than gradually impactful. So scenario one, you add five cents to the mill rate and debt service. Scenario two, you add 41 cents in one year. And like you said, that's a huge leap. So I think that procedurally the question is, if we can agree that there are items in capital that really should be funded in, in a given year because they're repetitive and they're constant and they're basically sort of a flat level, then what is the appetite for increase from one year to the next until we get to the point where all the things that we think should be in operating are in operating? And then you won't see a 41 cent increase in one year. Right. It's, it's, a, it's right. a correction. It right. is a correction. It's a correction that just happens and it has an impact when you make the correction. Right. And, then it's, and then it's taken care of. It's, it's over here and we're stuck with it over here. In order to move it, it's going to impact the, the overall um, operation or the, the expenditure part of the budget, but it's only going to impact it that once. Or if you do it incrementally, it impacts it for a few for a years, of, and then yeah. you get to the point where every tech refresh for the annual tech refresh for the school phases is already in your operating budget, and you don't have a jump from one year to the next, except for gradual this increase. This has been, a, on the school side, this has been historically an, an issue. When I came in and looked at the budget and looked at things that we had in capital, it's like, I don't think that they belong there. I mean, I'm not used to seeing those mm -hmm. on that side of the on, on that side of the uh, the spreadsheet. And Kate knows we painfully carried this reconciliation section of the budget that needed to be explained every time somebody looked at the budget. And it was just an attempt to say, these things are not, everything is fine and everything is being paid for, but the status quo is where we're at. And if 
if I'm to really truly reconcile, not in an accounting way, but correct by moving from this column to this column, it's going to impact my my uh, expenditures. It's going to, you know, my budget is going to. Well, you see, the impact of 1.5 million bucks right here. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it's in, it really is a question of do we believe that these things are in the right place? Do we care that they're not? Because the answer is they're really not. Um, so do we care about that? And do we care about that enough to put together a plan and basically? Uh, recognize that we're going to we're going to have to without impacting operations. Uh, I'll speak for the schools without imp impacting operations of the schools and the continued continued rebuilding that we're doing and being penalized by moving you know three buses and the refresh over into um, operations. Are, are we all willing to do that and recognize that it's it's going to for whatever period of time. If we do it in one year, it's going to be a big amount, yeah. and you know, but the pain only lasts a short time, um, and otherwise it's smaller amounts, and the pain just gets yeah. pulled out of it. But there's, I think there's also two other issues here. Um, <clears throat> so this 2.65 percent is a combination of school and municipal, correct? Mm -hmm. um, just looking at the quick dollar values up top, it looks like it's about the, the value of reductions about the same on each side. It's kind um, of the idea. The, the, then again, the, to me, the communication challenge. Also comes into play with that's not a 2.6 percent, 2.65 percent budget increase just because of the schools. That's a town right. one, and but the school budget is the one that's going to be reflected uh, on the voting side of things because that's where we report the that increase. So as long as I mean I think part of that communication piece needs to be that this isn't a result of only moving school buses over to the operational, and that increases solely because of the of the school budget. It's because, as a town, we've decided to also move these <coughs> three pieces of capital into the operational budget as well. We're making, we're making an accounting change right. for good right. reasons and right. I mean, thankful about it. Right, and, exactly. And exactly. I think no matter what happens, and I think this comes back to something I want to talk about today anyway, is based on where we are, at some point, I'd love the script to really talk about the communication plan, because we're going to have to have a good story, right. and we're all going to have to be on the same page, because I've I got a feeling this year will be a a communication challenge. Yeah. yeah, and the other issue we've got to deal with as well is getting to minimal receivership, and that's a, that's a big issue for us as well because, you know, <coughs> we're talking about trying to to in theory phase that in over a few years as well. So, I guess maybe my my, you know, from a joint perspective, I think we should use this forum to decide which one we want to try and accomplish first. I don't think we can do both at the same time. If we do, we do each one in small increments, yeah. and it'll take us five years to get anything done plus. You know what I mean? What's the second one you're talking about? Just get it, get building, into our, pre yeah. building into our budget, operational budget, yeah. the fact that we have a minimal receivership from the state. Whether we do or not, we need to build that in yeah. so we don't get the spike. Yeah. And that will take a few years as well, if we do it properly, mm -hmm. yeah. to yeah. gradually build that in. So. Maybe we can do a little bit of that and a little bit of this and kind of try and piece it all yeah. together. Or yeah. maybe we pick this and not do the minimum or something. Yeah. But I, we all, I, think, I think we're all keenly aware of that big increase, 2.65% number, and what's going to be palatable mm -hmm. to the citizens. Because we could do it all at once, but we all know there would be a tax revolt if we did that. It would be 7 8%, I think, or something if we yeah, did everything else. I should clarify. I'm the one who identified these five projects and the two criteria that, that I use. And and we'd have been wrong, but one, they, they're all financed in yep. one sort or another, and they're, they're all recurring yep. every year. Yep. Uh, there are some lesser ones, smaller amounts, you know, like district-wide roofing or flooring, but they're relatively speaking small mm -hmm. amounts of money, so yep. it's kind of the B category. Yep. We did this just to be able to kind of run the analysis and show you kind of the effect, but there's some other candidates that might be in the conversation. What's not here is some of the, not just philosophical, but financial reasons for fi for financing. Mm -hmm. um, we had a meeting yesterday, I know Kate and perhaps some others were here with our financial advisor. You know, and, and tax and financing typically is lower than the real cost of inflation. So there's, it, it sometimes is financially attractive for us given the rates we, we enjoy. Um, there's also the philosophy of financing that those that use the and value from the service or the product um, are those that are paying for it rather than prior generations. So I think there's other <laughs> factors that right, play yeah. here, and, right. uh, and, and some level of debt uh, is not bad. In right. fact, it's encouraged. Uh, the 
think we heard that loud and clear yesterday. Um, I guess the other point is, um, I think we got to be more concerned about kind of the, the, the whole debt management, the bigger, the bigger picture mm -hmm. is to, if we can stay consistent on our annual debt service cost, mm -hmm. and there's enough room to be able to meet our needs and make these sorts of invest investments, but keep that relatively constant, that shows itself in the, in the tax rate year to year. But if we can keep that as steady and level and predictable and stable as possible, that's what I've been striving to do. I think um, I've been thinking about what Peter was talking about, about communication. And regardless of where the funding comes from for a capital project, I don't think it would be terribly complex for us to identify, for example, an estimated interest cost. And as we present the capital budget, perhaps there's a place that says, you know, we estimate that this bond issue for the town in the coming year will be the equivalent of so many million dollars and that the estimated interest on that will be X. And so you've done your sort of, um, your, your transparency piece by identifying that this is the, mm -hmm. this is the base cost and mm -hmm. then there's an additional cost to financing. Um, and I don't, I want to simplify it too much because I think there's there's more that you could say about it, but that would certainly be a step. For what it's worth, as I look at these five items, I would really love to find a way to get the tech refreshed as a part of the school's operational budget because, one, I think that's so vitally important. We made huge investments and we need to stay on top of them. Um, and it would be great to structurally build that in really for security to make sure that it's there. Um, and also, I don't think it's a great use of to finance. Um, you know, in some cases, we're buying ancillary wires and plugs and things. I suspect I don't know. What, what I, I don't know that that's the case. Well, but, but I, I, yeah. I do agree with you. Yeah. But it's not a durable good to me. It's, sure. It's short term. <coughs> uh, but more more important than that, I think it's so vitally important and critical, mission critical to you guys. And yep. we know from history that that order of magnitude investment needs to be made year in and year out somewhere in the district. You guys have your own way of doing that. The, the other items are more durable. I think they're better candidates for financing. And I think I can make a strong argument that uh, financing is the way to go if you do it right for the right term. I uh, should so maybe, say that. maybe that's one approach is, right. uh, see if we can accomplish the tech refresh. Well, I think so. I think that we will. Well, no, but I think part of it, I mean, I, I would agree with Tom on some level that maybe the 450000 isn't all hardware stuff, but some of it is switchgear and, and hardware stuff that that rightfully should be in capital. I did an evaluation of that with Jen, who was shared, mm -hmm. to sit down and say, how much of this how much of this can get put into the operational? And then, and then the question becomes, how is that operational shift how is it operational done? Sure. Share. Do sure. we share it? We share IT right now. So then the question becomes, is that something that we, you know, we work out some way to, to fund that difference in the capital? I don't think, I, maybe we don't bring that 450 down to zero, but maybe that's the first step is to say, is there, and then that way it's not all, because the town isn't, if the school aren't the only ones benefiting from that on some level, because Jen's department is benefiting from that. So that could be a shared, um, some kind of shared. I mean, I think I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, very look at that makes me nervous. Okay. I think picking out one thing that happens to be from the school side that affects the tax rate <laughs> just contributes to the same exact conversation we've had for five years. But, but I think, I think we, had, we talked about, at least on the municipal side, that we're going to try to apply that type of thought process to everything that comes forward to us and try to struggle through. Is it operational? Is it capital? What should yeah. we do? And try to learn so, yeah, uh, I mean, we kind of said we're just gonna, we're not sure where it's going either, but we're gonna try to at least give that some consideration this year. And right, and it, even if it's not part of a policy, that's gonna be our practice to, yeah. to when we go through, when we look at the capital, we're gonna scrutinize it on almost everything we've talked about, long-term yeah. service, what's it doing to the site. I mean, all of those are questions that we responsibly need to have that discussion. I guess the question is, is do we set a policy to it and mandate it? Or do we do that as the normal course of business operations? But then the other you know. piece, too, is that now you're looking at capital versus operational, but we can keep some things in capital but not bond them. And I mm -hmm. think that's the, you know, so it can still stay in capital as opposed to increasing an operational budget, whether it's town or school, it still stays in capital. Right. It just becomes an appropriation as opposed to 
Right, and ultimately, I mean, I'm going to rely on staff to tell us what, you know, what their opinion is on what should go where and how and why. And if the explanation is 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 feasible, which to date I haven't had one that really hasn't been feasible, then okay, that's the recommendation from staff, and that's that's why we have them. You know, you know what I mean? So I want to throw in an or here about the tech refresh because Jen and I have had conversations, um, as Chris is alluding to. And really where we are today uh, in the budget that we're preparing for fiscal 17, last year we put in $100,000 into operating and the idea was to accommodate those things that Tom was talking about with keyboard covers and plugs and wires and cases for laptops and things that really so clearly don't belong in a capital budget even though they're part of a larger project that might be reasonably financed. So last year we moved $100,000 into operating and the concept was that we would do the same thing over the next four years and that we would get to having the bulk of the tech refresh in yeah. operating before we even started this larger conversation. It was the one thing that we had targeted uh, last year. So in the budget that I believe will be coming forward to you in a few weeks, there's now $200,000 in that line. And so Jen and I have been working on exactly what Chris was alluding to, which is a list that says these are things that are new, different, special, important, expensive things, and these are things that really belong in operating. We're going to take them out of that. So it, right now, we're at about half and half, and we're, we're using that kind of a benchmark to figure out what belongs in the operating half. So that Ultimately analysis we'll has already been done by the schools. Um, Jen and I are sort of sharing the spreadsheet and going through and figuring mm -hmm. out what what we are going to allocate to which side of the ledger. But, and you know, I, and I think um, I, I'm not sure who it was who made the point that you know there are other. This is this is a scenario that this you know this group just really needs to be aware of because. Um, it is a different, just selecting a different way of sort of financing what we're doing, either pay now or pay later. Um, I think that the the other piece in terms of, of um, uh, you know, moving to being a minimal receiver is, a, is something that we should also have kind of on the table at the same time. Mm -hmm. And certainly, you know, uh, despite the fact that there was some uh, movement up in Augusta for $15 million, that does not certainly make coal Scarborough, and I'm, I'm here to tell you that with the, about $500,000 as is projected, we're still starting with a, a deficit of um, a million, more than a million bucks in terms of the subsidy. So there's a, there's a lot of moving pieces yes. here, yeah. and in some ways, I think our intent, the four of us, had the intent of saying it, it's really important that people understand that there that, that there are different ways to look at some of these items, right. and there's a lot of concern about you know sort of mounting debt and all this other stuff. Well, so here's a little small scenario that gives you a little bit of a sense in terms of scenario A, scenario B. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know that it was expected that we would make decisions or that we would start to move things. Um, uh, you know, independent of, of, of what this group is, is going to decide on, and I think that there are just more other factors <coughs> to be considered yeah. before we <coughs> decide what we're doing here, because um, I know, and Kate can tell you, uh, given, the, given the, uh, the, um, the reinvestment that we need to make in the schools, you know, I was very proud to have identified things that needed to be reconciled, but in the end, very few things got reconciled that year. And then I would identify them the next year, and very few things would get reconciled because of there was there was just not an appetite for a understanding that it needed to be on that side, mm -hmm. and and b you know increasing the you know the percentage that people were not happy with to begin with. So you know it's it's all a matter of choice, but I do think there are three important, at least three important moving pieces right now. Yeah. To Peter's point of communication, I mean uh, part of this exercise for for me was to right some wrongs up or, or, or some, some people have I think improperly viewed how we view capital have heard it used as a slush fund, just kicking the can down the road, kind of hiding money in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, I just want this group to understand and, and perhaps we need to do a better job to communicate it beyond as well. That that's not the case. That that, that we that think this stuff <coughs> things through and that um, Very not dumb. everything is financed and, and all those sorts of things have been critical parts of this process right along. 
Okay. And the other thing that uh, Joe brought up in yesterday's workshop, which I think was very important, was that if you have a finance situation, you also have the opportunity to refinance or refund. And uh, that that's something that the financial advisors look at for us on an annual basis of the existing debt that we have, how can we make that less costly to the community? And, you know, if you've gone out and you've spent the money in fiscal year 17, then you can't go out and refinance it in fiscal year 18. So there's another factor that he threw on the table as to the flexibility that, that financing gives you that you don't have when you buy something outright. I suspect a fall or an outgrowth from the meeting yesterday, I would like the town finance committee to have some conversation around this debt management. Where is our comfort level? Mm -hmm. And there's a number of metrics that can be used: percentage of total expenditures, mm -hmm. uh, debt per capita. Um, but I think if we can arrive at uh, a level of comfort and an appetite, call it what you will, uh, then that will give us guidance as to what we can do mm -hmm. and when we can do it to stay within that comfort zone. Yeah. Right. And I also think so there's more of a macro yeah. approach to it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. to Peter's point, we have to do a, a much better job communicating that that decision out and why. and be more clear why what we're doing and why and what we're basing it on. Not everybody's going to agree with it, of course, but we at least have to have a logical explanation of the process we went through. Here's what we looked at. Here's what we determined why. And maybe that's a separate you know, workshop session or something that we can get out there and make sure we can mm -hmm. communicate that effectively. Before we walk away from the phone, I'm going to agree with you. I mean, I'd, I'd, it'd be great if, you know, not specific items, but I, I think I would support trying to more clearly define what's capital and what's operating in, in a way and then think about at some point the transition right. if, that we need to do that. But I absolutely hear your point that this year is going to be a real challenge and we, we're going to have to, as a group, figure out what it is we want to communicate, how we want to communicate, where we want to start working on some of these things. It's going to be a challenge. So, Great discussion. Okay, moving on. Um, planning for the 2016 budget forum. Sean's not here. Um, so yeah, I, I think, think the four of us were supposed to get we're together on that. And then I texted <laughs> <laughs> <I> Sean <laughs> <text laughs> and I was like, Sean, we're in a meeting. He gets me met without you. I think we were successful last year, and it was the first year, yeah. of, of just having a few of us sit and just kind of look at the logistics, and maybe, maybe that's what yeah, we Yeah, we did do. a debrief after. I don't remember any great concern or criticism or, oh, we should yeah. have done it this way. So, um, and I think we should look back at sort of the timeline of when we started asking for questions how, it actually yeah. how that out. process yeah. gets rolled out. One of the things that we have this year that we didn't have last year was we have the budget joint uh, web page, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be the go-to for all of our uh, material. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that having that maybe would be allow us to advertise a little more flashily the mm. form. Not that it wasn't badly attended. I thought it was very well attended, yeah. but just to be one more outlet. I think you mentioned that maybe Sean Bushway might be able to give us some um, better ability from a technological standpoint to take in questions. And yeah, I guess the question is, do, do we want to start taking questions now before the budget season is presented? I don't know what good that would do because we don't have anything tangible to discuss, but I'm, I'm, I mean, we can open the portal up if there are general budget questions, but to the, to the point we made last year, as soon as we do it, someone's going to monitor it and someone's going to take the time to plow through it all. And right now we're assembling budgets. So, I mean, I don't, think, point, it, I don't think it's a bad idea, but I also, some, we're going to have to have somebody weed through it, if, for lack of a better word, to, you know, what's relevant, what's not relevant. And maybe I would assume, I'd suggest we wait until we have an actual physical budget that we can address and well, point to. Let's say this, we'll certainly promise to be ready to receive comments the day after, after George and I make the presentation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, that day forward, we're and maybe well, announce that people can hold the date. That's sure. That's yeah, yeah. yeah and, the, the and the other thing we could do is we, as we do hold the date, we could say, you know, we will be at accepting questions in advance, and so maybe 
y'all out there in the community could be thinking about their questions and writing them down and as you think of them and then we'll give you an opportunity to submit them. So right. like submitting could happen what is that the seventh, April seventh. Even something after. to say the portal will be open with budgets presented the seventh, the portal is open on the eighth for questions or something like that or whatever. And I think we would encourage I know we took a little criticism from some that we get questions in advance and prepared our answers. I'm not sure why we were criticized, but we were. Uh, but I, I think that's the best way, so we yeah, can make yeah. sure we can provide accurate, sure. thorough responses. Sure. Yes. You know, we're not trying to hide anything, but right. depending sure. on the question, we're not going to be able to answer it. Right. You know, when it's and, asked. and you right. don't want the whole thing to be, I'll get back to you with that. But also to that point, though, if, and if we do have time afterwards and time a lot, then we open it up for questions from the pool, from well, the floor as well. Yeah. I mean, it was. It, I mean, yeah, I thought it worked yeah. as well. Yeah, it worked. It worked. Well. I mean, I thought it worked well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Worked well. yeah. yeah. I, I agree. But I mean, I mean, so we, we, we still give them the option. We were able to field most of those, yeah. I recall. Yeah. So. People wrote yeah. them down. <coughs> yeah, yeah they were there. Yeah. And there was some follow-up afterwards, but I think for the most part, it was a great step forward. So. Do you think it would be worthwhile, not in terms of maybe accepting questions right now, but provide a kind of frequently asked questions or, you know, we're working on capital versus operating, we're working on um, budget scenarios, we're working on educational subsidies, loss of revenues, you know, just some bullet points so folks <coughs> know that we're just not trying to, you know. I think taxes. Right, and I think a good point is just we direct them to the website that has all the data in there that we're all working on. You know what I mean? I mean that we'll have definitions in there, we'll have all of our documentation in there and just say, hey, you know, if you have questions, here's what we're working on, here's the status, it's all up to date and current. Well, one thing Go and take a peek if you want, but we're really not going to be addressing budget, yeah, qu I question about the budget until the budget comes out. <laughs> well, I'm well, aware of these conversations that have never happened at this level at this time in the budget process, to my we have a document from last year, which is the response to the budget form. That's what I was going to say. It's last all year's questions. It's are last year's questions <coughs> and all the answers mm -hmm. were published. You know, we so I can post yeah. that on the yeah. on the new portal right yeah. now. And is that portal live? Yep. I can't get there. Uh, on the town side, it is. Sean is working on the link okay. from the school side because okay. we already had a budget page, so he's trying to figure right. out how to preserve that, but also have another one. So okay. if you go to scarboroughmain.org. Okay. And then you look at the sidebar there under town government. Right I think at the it top, is. Uh, it's right near the town down. manager and the town council. It's budget. It's budget. Okay. And, and that'll the point is, uh, both the town right school now. website no. will, will point you back to the same uh, behind the scenes, yeah. but point you back to the same website. Right. It's either at the on top the or it's down the side. Down the side. Yeah. 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 On, the, on, the, on a different question, sort of related, have we? Do we need to build more time into our schedule that as we get closer to having the budget delivered and then? Yeah, we built in enough time for this group to kind of get on the same page with what we're going to do it's and how we're going to. It's consistent times and it's built all the way through. Yeah, but it Which is, it did not happen last year. Yeah. Because as things got a little crazy, we didn't see yeah. yeah. And but that, so that is already on the calendar. Yeah, so you we got. I mean, it'll I be, it'll be every other week. Good. This okay. time frame, and I think that will go through until it we goes have all the way an through, It goes budget. through the process. I, I just mm -hmm. took a look at the dates again for Good. leadership council, and because it I think runs all the way through. Because I think to get to your point, those four or five big issues, mm -hmm. we'll need. It, we all need to be on the same page and make sure that when we do yeah. show up at the budget forum, mm -hmm. that we're all, you know, pretty comfortable with where we are. Right, know? and we're also working in. I mean, on the fine, on the municipal side, right. we're discussing sure. those things on our oh, for right. our portion. Yeah. I would assume the school, I know, the school finance is doing it on their side as well. So really this is kind of the way to it's gonna be a challenge. connect the dots, if you will, yep. you, you know what I mean? Yep. And, and make sure we're all aware of each other's yep. situations and scenarios. So should we commit to what we're going to commit to um, in terms of the <laughs> planning for the budget form? Planning the budget form? The four of us have to sit down. Okay. Who's going who's gonna to do the invitation? Mr. Hall or me? Do, do, another monkey. do a monkey. Do you see Google, you see Google. I'll send it by way of Google. I'll send it by way of Google. I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Chris is a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many texts. I'll put the budget FAQs up onto the chat. Uh, uh, Can you get onto that if you don't have access from your side, or do it have to come from the town side? Um, we'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Sean gave me a link, and I've already posted some stuff, so I know I can okay. get there. Okay. I don't remember what path I took, but okay. I'll get there. Okay. I can get there from here. So you can just mm -hmm. offer a few different kinds. Mm -hmm. and then we can
Thursdays at this time work great for me. Yeah, that's, that's probably the first place I would go. Perfect. Okay, moving on to fund balance discussion. I will turn this over again yeah. to Tom. So we did provide an analysis that uh, Ruth put together with I believe Kate's oversight or blessing. Um, well, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> then it's no, Ruth. Ruth's not done. Ruth and I have agreed on what pieces go where, so we're really happy with that. And, th and these are good numbers in that they are the product of our uh, audit. Um, yeah. I should mention, just as I think about it, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. there will be a joint present a presentation to a joint workshop of the Board of Education and Council for your, your audit. Uh, so these numbers are from that audit. Um, Ruth, do you want to walk us through kind of the big picture? Sure. We have a fund balance policy that says uh, there are certain budgets that will be included in our calculation of fund balance and uh, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board essentially said we're changing how you actually do fund balance so it's no longer just you know un undesignated you have to look at assigned and restricted and all these other different things so we updated our policy to say those items in our fund balance that we really can't touch because somebody else it's their money like scholarships that's not our money um, so things like that we said we're not going to include those in fund balance because we can't use it right. infrastructure for example um, so we went through at the end of the financial statement at June 30th, we come up with a number and our total fund balance, school, town, everybody is 11702 and based on our fund balance policy we said of our total we're going to include these certain things committed, assigned and unassigned and that came to 8221000 some of it's school, some of it's town. And then in the next section we said, okay, these are all the items we're going to include when we determine what our fund balance is going to be. We're going to look at our total expenditures, but we're going to look at these specific things. So based on those two areas, we said, okay, so if our operating budget is 76800000 5%, which is in our fund balance policy, is the minimum that we, will, we won't go below that, is $3.8 million. If we stay, um, our goal is essentially one month, which is 8.3, that brings us to just under 6.4 million. And then we said, okay, and once we reach 10%, we're going to start putting that towards capital. So in order to get to 10%, we need a fund balance of 7.6. So we're at 8.2. So uh, based on that scenario, we have an $8.2 million fund balance that we're going to be able to use and 10% of our overall fund balance is 7.6. So the difference between that says that we have $541,000 essentially. Well, number one, we've reached our 8.3. So, you know, I think this is either the first year in a long time or the second year, I'm not sure. But we're, we haven't been that close to it in a long time. So now we are, we're actually above our ten, uh, our 10%, so now we can actually start putting some of this money towards capital, which is part of our policy. And then I think the the back page, well, the front page was just a summary, the back page is a little bit more detailed. So I think for my purposes, uh, I would look for a, a limited, very kind of measured use of fund balance. We, I think, have done an admirable job of building fund balance back. Uh, this is a slide from the audit presentation, just simply showing the fact that over time we're showing a positive trend building fund balance back from a low point um, back in 2009 as I recall. Um, so I, for my purposes, uh, suggested use of fund balance will be very measured and somewhat limited. Uh, I, because Ruth and I sit through these rating calls with the bonding agency, uh, the one thing that I think I would love to be able to tell them is continue to show our restraint, if you will, and the fact that we're consciously building this back. We have a policy, we've got to follow it. If we, if we, if we don't, um, there's no explanation for it, really. So, though we could dip below 10%, um, I'm going to suggest that we, we look to fund capital with this extra money, 541, uh, certain capital items. And then I think up for discussion is perhaps the 
school side of, of this fund balance, it would dip below 10%. But I, I say that because uh, you have other statutory requirements that really suggest that you shouldn't be maintaining much of any exactly. fund balance. So I, I think that's a fair point that ought to be talked about probably in this forum, whether there's some part of the school's fund balance that um, goes, in, uh, goes into next year's budget. And I suspect Kate might already have something plugged in. Well, Kate does have something plugged in, but only because um, in the current fiscal year we are using 425,000. That's this assigned piece on Ruth's chart. We're using $425,000 of school fund balance to support the current year budget. Whether we'll need all of that or not is debatable. We'd probably be okay. Um, but we don't have it to spend today because we spent it yesterday. So what we really have in the pot is $540,000 that's waiting for us uh, and whatever ground we may gain in the course of fiscal 16. And I'll have a much better sense of that in another month or so. And, and whatever you don't spend is 425. And whatever we don't spend is the 425. So um, just to talk for a second about the, the statute piece that Tom alluded to, there is a state statute, which I have here in my happy hands, um, about school budgets and the fact that under state statute, school departments may not carry forward more than 3% of the value of that previous fiscal year school budget in unused fund balance. Um, the statute was waived for quite a few years. You can see in my little chart here, it started in the economic downturn year of 0809, and they said, well, yeah, you can actually carry more fund balance because they, we were getting federal money and things were getting really confusing and people were trying to hold on to money and then use it in the ensuing year. Um, or it was just a very difficult time. But in 2014-15, in that was the last year that they waived the statute. So now we're back to saying, that we're not able, under the law, to carry more than 3% of the prior year's budget and not use it to fund the next year. Um, right now, the $540,000 represents 1.29% of last year's budget. So we're halfway under the threshold, so we have no problem meeting the statute, uh, but it's, it, it's not very much. I mean, if we had a million dollars, that would be the 3%, and we'd still be able to carry it in fund balance, but we certainly wouldn't because... But for, for me, what's persuasive and, uh, is, is just that there's a statute that the intent of this is that you shouldn't be sitting in fund balance. How we choose to use it and when you use it is a local decision. But I think that's a defining difference then um, between town and school. Exactly. Yeah, I would uh, also like to point out that uh, I, my understanding from yesterday that they were pretty clear about the 8.33 was was our policy, and I mean 10 is nice, but 8.33 is something that they would be looking at more specifically is what I kind of took. Oh, well, maybe, I, maybe I misunderstood that. I don't know. Uh, under no circumstances should we dip below 8.33. Correct. Correct. I think we'll have a tough conversation. Right. If we even go below 10, I think if it's reusing the school's portion, I think that's an easier conversation for us to have or, or to justify this thing, frankly. And, and just to be a little clear, that 540000 that we're showing is restricted school fund balance, it's restricted from from the town, per right. se. The school can say we're going to use 540000 but we can't say, oh, we're going to take that 540 and put it in public works. So, right. so that's why I'm showing it as restricted, but it's really available for school for the use. schools. Yeah, and the, that's the another clause of the same statute that says money allocated for school purposes may be expended only for school purposes. So that's why, as Ruth says, it's restricted. But um, to go back to what Tom asked earlier on, we had $425,000 in the fiscal 16 budget, sort of plugged in as a as a revenue source, um, for lack of a better way to describe it. And so if we go into fiscal 17 and we don't use some fund balance, then that's another loss of revenue. So it's one of the pieces that George was alluding to earlier that's in motion. We have to decide how much subsidy loss and, uh, that we have and how much we're going to fill that hole with other things and is some of that fund balance. Mm -hmm. And some of it is the, um, the Wentworth debt premium. And I think it's important for us at this table to have that discussion. You guys, the school board makes that decision on your fund balance. It's important for us 
to know what that decision is going to be because then we also have decisions to make on our fund balance as well. I'd like to suggest a collaborative conversation because what the school board may choose to do affects us. That's what I'm saying. We need to use this venue as a way to have that conversation because, I mean, if the school decides, you know, we're looking at a million dollar shortfall from the state, if the decision from the school board is to use a fund balance, I'm not saying that it should be, but as an example, if they do that, then that impacts our overall fund balance and then we've got to look at that from the town side. Yeah, I would suggest the use of fund balance ought to be, at the 11th hour, it ought to be one of the last considerations we make. Maybe the piece that puts us over the end line, so to speak. But it is one of the important subsets of one of the other big issues that we were talking about, which is the million dollar shortfall in subsidy. I agree with you. And Tom, was I, when I, in the discussion yesterday about bonding, as we look, when we've already done the long range planning for the town, which was 40 million or so in the next couple of years, when we get the school's piece of that, that's going to be another number. And if I understood it right, what we decide to do with reserves may very well impact what our financing rates will be on those bonds a couple of years from now. So it's just something also to, so it's not only the current impact, but it's also thinking about what that's going to do for future interest rates. There seems to be some interest or appetite on the part, and there's two of the three members of finance here, that 833 ought to be something higher, that we actually ought to commit to having a higher fund balance. And that's a conversation that probably is going to happen overnight. I think it's 833. Your point's right. It all, it doesn't matter. There's a couple basis points. So if we're looking to borrow 80 million, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't do the math in my head, so I don't know what the impact is. We'll have to figure it out. Well, Joe was very clear on what that impact is going to be. If we slide up one ranking, one rating, it's five basis points from the slot we're in right now. Consequently, we're also in the first of the high rating. If we slide backwards, that's worse. We take a bigger hit if we go backwards than a positive hit moving forward. So the five basis points was $50,000 on a million dollars borrowed, isn't it? Yeah, it's $50,000. 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 Yeah, it's
So <laughs> what the statute <laughs> says, and I'll try and make it simple, was if you are at a point where your the wealth of your community is compared to everyone else in EPS, basically says you don't get any subsidy. There is a minimum threshold, and that minimum, as I figured it out for Scarborough, is about $1.9 million. So we're really Very pretty close. damn close. Yeah. We're a million dollars away right now. Right. Um, um, so the way that you figure it out is there's a calculation of how many kids you have and then a minimum amount that they give you for those kids. It's 5%, or I'm sorry, 3% of what you would get in the EPS allocation. And then there's another chunk that you get for special education. You add all those things together. And if you look at Scarborough's numbers, the way that they've calculated them in EPS for fiscal 17, it comes out to about $1.9 million, $1.86 million in subsidy. So this isn't scientific by any means. I would certainly want to get better numbers from the state, but it gives you the order of magnitude and the fact that we're more than halfway there right well, now. Well, and, and I think some, you have to do some assumptions, I suppose, in that analysis. I don't expect the major variables that are affecting us negatively today are going to change much next year and right. probably not the year after that. So. It sounds as though within two years we're likely to be there. One of, you know, one of the things that we do have to, you know, when you talk about the major variables, and I hear people say that um, the population of students is plummeting, that is incorrect. That is just not correct. We've never plummeted. We've taken a little dip. All indications that I see are that we're going up. We've had, just at the middle school alone, uh, since, uh, since the, uh, uh, the, the vacation, Every single day, we have kids coming in. We've got probably 16 more kids in that school than we did however many weeks ago vacation was. So it's really, and so that I just give you that as an example. And you we know, also the have the long range. Uh, right, that's what I was going to say. The other, the other piece is that you know, we've got a very careful long range um, study, and the town's uh, folks were very instrumental in helping us do that around the demographics. And the demographics are not pointing to any perilous, you know, decrease in, in population. I, I agree with you. I don't think things are going to change much, but that one, that one point when I see or I hear someone say, you know, the, the population is just dwindling, it's like, uh, no, it's not. Yeah, I, I mean, I think all of those are, are symptoms and variables in the formula, and I think it's all also the, the challenge for us is it's relative to the surrounding communities as well. So that's kind of the, if it were just our predictability, I think we'd be in a better position to, to estimate. Um, but, but it's but what happens with the state average and what happens right, with exactly. the communities surrounding so, us that matters. So I think it, I mean, and we've had this discussion kind of around the edges, and I think maybe this year is the right year to say we start working towards minimal receivership in our planning to avoid those fluctuations in income and not dealing with the scrambling right. at the last minute to plug right. a shortfall. So that what comes in, in essence, is not a shortfall, it's a, anything above that's a windfall. Right. And then we can start looking at the positive impacts mm -hmm. of, of that versus struggling to make up the ground. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the only good news about getting the minimal receiver is you remove the volatility. Exactly, which is really what we, what I think one of our biggest challenges is. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the lemonade <laughs> out of lemons, right? I mean, that's, that's what we got to kind of. I do believe that, and although none of us um, can profess to understand that, that, um, uh, how that whole formula works, I do think that there is a, um, there's more of an impact than just a negative impact in terms of population and right. a positive impact in terms of valuation. It's like a, it's a that plus this plus another whammy factor that we get. And the whammy factor is how much money you've got going into the formula because if you put a little bit of money into the formula, the variables have a bigger impact on skewing that outcome. Mm -hmm. If you put more money into the formula, those variables are diminished mm -hmm. in terms of... Oh, more money statewide. More money, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, how much yeah. you put in the beginning of the funnel yeah. to fund the formula itself yeah. is... You know that if that changes, we will see a, a an inversely proportional benefit from that because as that you know what I'm saying as that mm -hmm. number dips well, down in the funding part of it, are the variables that we suffer from are greaterly exposed in the formula than if we had full funding. So again, but I'd rather be looking at that as a positive and a windfall when it comes through, not as we were counting on that and we have to bank on what's going to be entirely accurate with that. Projections right. and predictions that release the scene. But what we know is what our exactly. what our hole is we're right staring now. at right now. Exactly. And I've got to believe fiscal year eighteen is not going to be well it's different. It's right. going to be a 
challenge yet again. Right. That alone is what we, is what we should plan for. Yeah. And, and I think this bond premium money um, is going to be a, an absolute key, a requirement for us to kind of have a, a more gentle landing. Yeah. Yeah. Because even if our population were to surge, it's not going to have that impact right away. for next year. Right, because they're always a year behind in the counting. <laughs> Silver lining, true. Very so nice. next year, we take this year's population already known to yeah, be it's slightly. Every, everything is three year averages, right? Three everything three is um, it's a rolling two. average, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. For the they April. didn't count, they take the prior April and October. October. So yeah. right now, for fiscal 17, they're looking at our student count for April of 2015 and October of 2015. April's usually a little bit higher and then they average them out. Um, but the numbers that they're using to decide how much it costs to run things in Scarborough in fiscal 17 are our actual expenditures in fiscal 15. So there is always a lag of you know, their allocation of costs as well. They do apply a certain percentage magically to say, oh, well, yeah, we know it's going to be a little more expensive, but it's not significant. Did you ever get clarification, or maybe you gave it to me already, I'm sorry, um, about the pre-K enrollment? Does that count as one-for-one one new student? I don't know for sure, I but think I that think it so. Does. Yeah. So the way that it's labeled in the formula is pre-K to eight. So right. I'm assuming that if you okay. have a so if we had, pre-K, so if we have two day, right, if we have two half-day programs, that make a full day, we're getting, we could get double the enrollment credit. I, I don't think you would get credit for half days. I don't know about that. Yeah. We, we could find out. Yeah. That's how <laughs> we I could understand. find that out. Was what we had. Well, but, but also, I, I mean, I just want to be clear, too. That might be great for the EPS formula, but, and it it's increases a score, but our expenditures on that other side. Yeah. Right. 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 Now yeah. we're hiring yeah. teachers. Right. Now we're yeah. hiring teachers. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 And not to mention that there are right. a lot of really nice pre Ks here in town right. who might have a right. few thoughts about <laughs> what we're doing for their business. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to point out that it, while it would positively impact the EPS, it, it's not necessarily the no brainer. It's not the reason to do it. It's not the reason to do it. Well, it's not lemonade. Right. And we remember, right, that we're getting about 11 cents on the dollar in 2016. So, Right. You've got to spend a buck and get 11 cents back for your pre-K kids. Pennywise counsel. That's not to say that pre-K is not a good investment. It's a no. good investment for other reasons. Right. So, uh, I don't have my calendar. What's the April date, the first meeting in April? April 7th. So, April 7th. We would do the uh, subsidy gap. Yeah, just a little more receiver discussion. Yeah, the long I think it's all of those pieces. All wrapped right. together. Uh, April, April 7th, 7th is first reading. That's the you know that's the school board, school board first, first right. right. The sixth is have their ninety four meeting on the sixth. Roll out of the budget right. The roll out. Sixth is a Wednesday. Sixth is a Wednesday. Yeah. April Sorry. 6th. Right. 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 April 6th. So you just want to be surprised? We'll just let you, George and I... Well, not to be her. put the cart before the horse, but i got to put actually, something in my budget there. <laughs> but actually, I think that we should, um, you know, I think that we should maybe just plan for a little bit of an extra just long meeting on the 24th <laughs> so that we can, we, so that we go into this kind of having a yeah. sense about what our strategy is. Yeah, this is I, I think it's, if, if we're going to present something on the 6th, we need to have a conversation Absolutely. before that. Yeah. All right, so we should plan on a longer meeting on the 24th? Yep. Uh, just for the record, the school board has a 7 o'clock that day. We do tonight, too. Oh, good for you. I'm just saying. That's for the <laughs> We're hard workers well, over this. We've been doing you only work one day a week, but we've been doing two hours. <laughs> yeah. We've been Sorry. staying pretty close to an hour. We, we could do two hours. You know, an yeah. hour for what we're calling CPAIR, which is actually now the wrong name, but... Nep what is that? Nepri now, I think. I can't remember that So 2 to 4 p.m. Probably we're calling a lot of heavy research and things. Whatever. Yep. So everybody have that two to four. I'll be here for the first hour. Or at least right now. So yeah. On March 24th. Okay, so meeting recap. We have George is going to send out an invitation. Mm -hmm. um, Keith's going to post the budget form document for us. I have that on my to do list. We'll get that right up on the. That's on the forum. I, I do want to circle back to Sean about the link from the school side, though, because he said he was working on something, and I don't know what happened with that. The other part of this little takeaway discussion is to make sure Sean on the town side and I guess Jody on the school side, are there any tidbits to report back to your group, really to the communication piece? 
I don't know if there are in this meeting, but I, I, as I recall, well, I that's the way this came yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> and I think for us, what, what I do anyway, because ours is usually, like we have one, I have our school board meeting tonight, so we just sort of go through generally what was discussed, not, you know, we don't think we need to go to I'll leave it up to you if you want to report out for Sean and Sean's today. It's a, well, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll sort it out. Yeah, we'll sort it out. Yeah. We'll sort it out. Yeah. But I think that's an important part, just kind of yeah. keep beating the drum. Yeah. So if we keep talking about those people, we realize that <laughs> folks are meeting, talking about uh, important things. Not just sitting around eating bonbons. Here. Right. So and you have to have some. Why am I holding out? But that's a good idea. I hear the growth And also, the last three of we need to. Now that I, I just finished that, situation. now that I get Perfect. the rules a little bit better, I think yeah, I can Wikipedia play. is not a valid source. Oh, I need those bathrooms. He wrote that. 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 Um, gotta write that one down. Public input? Jean Marie? Anything? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading it in now. Okay, no. And you can read the public laugh. No, I said the public laugh. I've been in that, as you know, in touch with a few people in Augusta who are not really happy about this 15 million. Uh, and then they, but um, it took 3 million of it, just so you know, from the casino money which is like taking money from I one thing of education. I thought it all was supposed to go to education, but okay. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Only yeah. 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 No, we're not. It's public know. comment. Uh, the co right, the comment was that uh, there don't count on any additional funding this year, period. Yeah. Yeah. There's hopes out there, but don't, that's it. Okay. Fifteen, we're done. Right, no, that's absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. And, and, and there's all these other things tied to it. Yeah. So, um, Okay. And a million, that's statewide, yep. so we're not getting 15 million. <laughs> no, 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 no,